This is Adele Gasly. I'm going to present to you part three of the chapter about transformers. In this part, I will cover the following topics. Rating and nameplate and the equivalent circuit parameters. Every transformer is designed and constructed for specific application and ratings. The ratings are usually provided and displayed on a nameplate that is stick on the transformer casing. The ratings of a transformer are its rated voltage, which means that the device can continuously operate at the rated voltage without being damaged due to the insulation failure, and the rated current, which means that the device can continuously operate at the rated current without being damaged due to thermal destruction. For instance, if a transformer has the following information written on its nameplate, then we can deduce from this information that the transformer is a step-down transformer, which has two windings, one rated for 1,100 volt and the other one for 110 volts. Thus, the turn ratio A is equal 1,100 divided one by 110, which is 10. This means also that each winding is designed for a maximum power of 10 kilovolt amp. We can deduce the current rating for high voltage winding as 10,000 over 1,100, which is 9.09 .09 amps. And the current rating for lower voltage winding is 10,000 divided by 110, which is 90.9 .09 amps. To be able to analyze the performance of the transformer using the equivalent circuit, we should first know all the equivalent circuit parameters. To determine these parameters, we should conduct two types of experiments, the no-load or open circuit test and the short circuit test. Okay, thank you. Uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, open circuit test on the transformer and the single uh, and short circuit test on the transformer. Uh, we're going to take uh, one single phase transformer and we're going to show to you how we can run the experiments on this transformer to be able later on to calculate the equivalent circuit parameters. So uh, before starting the experiment we have to uh, first look at the uh, nameplate of the transformer and the nameplate will have all the information related to the power, the input voltage and output voltage. So here we have an example of transformer, single phase transformer. It has two windings in the secondary. We're going to take only one winding and our voltage supply will be 220 volts. The output in the secondary will be 110 volts. So we're going to take only one winding this side. And we know that the power should be one kilovolt amp. As you know that the open circuit test, is called also the no load test, will be uh, run at rated voltage at uh, the output, we keep the, uh, the, uh, the input, we keep the output open. Now in Zurich, in Zurich Sijo, you're going to show you how you're going to connect, make the connections of the primary to the uh, source and uh, put the, the uh, ammeter, voltmeter and wattmeter uh, uh, in, into the circuit so that we can measure the uh, open circuit voltage, current and power. Now if you're going to use only one device, one meter, that can do play the role of a meter, volt meter and watt meter at the same time. So please, engineer Sujoy, can you show them the connection, how you do the connections for running an open circuit test? So this is the power supply and this is a variable power supply. So we have to actually adjust it to the rated voltage uh, of the single phase transformer for the uh, open circuit test. And uh, this one, as Dr. Adil already mentioned, uh, it has a current coil as well as a voltage coil. So we have to first connect the power supply to the current coil. So the plus, the line should be connected to the plus and from the comb or the negative it should go to the positive of the transformer, positive terminal of the transformer. So I connected the two wires and uh, completed the circuit and from the negative coil it should go back to the from the uh, negative coil, it should go back, or negative of the coil, it should go back to the neutral of the power supply. So the current, the ammeter is already connected, then we have to complete the circuit for 
the voltmeter. So what we are doing, we are, we are applying the source voltage to the primary winding of the transformer, but meanwhile we are also measuring the current, and that's why the ammeter should be always in series with the circuit. Now we have to connect the voltmeter in parallel, so in order to do that, we can use the uh, positive and negative of the same coil itself. So from the positive, it should go to the positive of the wattmeter or the volt voltmeter coil and the negative of the coil should be connected to the negative of the uh, voltmeter. So we turn on the, uh, the power supply and uh, we have to set the voltage to the rated voltage of the transformer. We have uh, to look at the primary, it's 220 volts. So here we can adjust the voltage by looking at the voltmeter and adjust the voltmeter is the upper. So the reading of the voltage is the upper part, then the medium is the uh, ammeter and, and the bottom is the watt meter. So here we have about 220 volts. So we can keep it like this. Take the readings and uh, these readings will be helpful for us to do some calculations of the open circuit test. So you can hold it and take the readings and do the calculations later on. During this test, the transformer primary is connected to an AC voltage source at rated voltage of the transformer, while the secondary winding is left open. We connect one ammeter, one voltmeter, and one wattmeter as shown in this circuit. Under this operating condition, there is no current in the secondary circuit, so we can approximate the equivalent circuit as the shunt branch only. Using this equivalent circuit, we can deduce the core loss resistance, RC1, as the ratio of the square of the open circuit voltage, VOC, square, over the measured open circuit power, POC. The current IC1 in the core loss resistance, RC1, is equal to the ratio of the voltage and the resistance, RC1. Then we can calculate the magnetizing current, RMS value, IM1, as the square root of the difference between the square of the total input current, I open circuit, and the square of the core loss current, IC1. Finally, the mutual reactance XM1 can be calculated as the ratio of the open circuit voltage VOC over the magnetizing current IM1. Note that all current and voltage values are RMS values. We can also calculate the same parameters RC1 and XM1 by following a different procedure. We can first determine the power factor from the measured voltage, current, and power during this open circuit operation. Then we deduce the currents in the core resistance and mutual reactance as follows. Note that phi zero is the power factor angle that is determined from the power factor. So after deducing phi zero, we can calculate sine phi zero. Finally, we calculate the core loss resistance, RC1, and the mutual reactance, XM1, as given by these two equations. Note that the subscript 1 in the parameters RC1 and XM1 indicates that these parameters are referred to the primary side of the transformer because we have done all measurements and calculations on this side of the transformer. Now for the short circuit test, which is the second test that is needed for calculating the equivalent circuit parameters, we can use the same circuit like the previous one, like the open circuit test. What we do is that we go to the secondary and we do a short circuit. So we put a wire between the two terminals and we short circuit it. We make sure that the power supply is off from in the beginning. So uh, make sure that you don't have a voltage. Now in the short circuit, 
The short circuit is not, should not be run at full voltage because otherwise we'll have a very high current that may damage the transformer. What we do, we start the voltage uh, from zero and keep on increasing it and we put, we should watch the ammeter and see if, and we increase the voltage until we reach a rated current. Now how can you find the rated current? The rated current here we know that the transformer is one kilovolt amp. We have 220 volts. 1,000 divided by 220, which is equal to 4.56, okay? So we, we, uh, we turn on the power supply. We watch the, uh, our ammeter, so our eyes and our meter. We increase the voltage slowly. Until we get 4.5 or 4.6 amps, that's uh, fine, okay. So any current close to that value will be fine. Now we stop it at 4.49, which is given to 4.5. Now we take the readings, and these readings, we're gonna use them for calculating other parameters of the circuit, as you have seen in the theory. The other test is the short circuit test. During this test, we apply a low voltage to the primary winding while the secondary winding is short circuit. We use one ammeter, one voltmeter, and one wattmeter, which we connect as shown in this circuit. We should start by applying a very low voltage and increase it gradually making sure that the current does not exceed its rated value, otherwise we may damage the transformer. During this test, the equivalent circuit of the transformer can be approximated with this circuit. Since we operated the transformer at its rated value of the current, then we can neglect the shunt branch because its current is small compared to the rated current. In this case, the equivalent resistance are equivalent can be calculated as the ratio of the short circuit power, PSC, over the square of the short circuit current, ISC. The equivalent total impedance is then determined from the ratio of the short circuit voltage and the short circuit current. Finally, the equivalent reactance X equivalent is calculated as the square root of the square of Z equivalent minus the square of R equivalent. Similarly to the open circuit test, we can also proceed in a different way and calculate first the power factor as the ratio of the short circuit power over the short circuit current and voltage. Then we can calculate the equivalent impedance Z equivalent as the ratio of the short circuit voltage, VSC, and the current, ISC. Then R equivalent is equal to ZSC multiplied by the power factor. Knowing the power factor, we can deduce the power factor angle and its sign value, and then we can calculate the equivalent reactance X equivalent as the product of the equivalent impedance Z equivalent and the sign of the power factor angle. Note that both methods should give the same results. So the, uh, after uh, doing the open circuit test, which is a no load test and the uh, short circuit test, there is one more measurement that we need to complete the, uh, all the measurement that will help us find all equivalent circuit parameters. The uh, next measurement is to uh, measure the uh, winding, primary winding resistance R1. For that, we use a normal ohm meter and uh, we connect the ohm meter on the terminals of the uh, primary winding and then we uh, take the readings of the resistance.
after calculating RC1 and XM1 from the open circuit test and R equivalent 1 and X equivalent 1 from the short circuit test, then we can deduce the other equivalent circuit parameters R1, R2, X1, and X2, as we will see in the next slides. We know that in this case, R equivalent 1 and X equivalent 1 are referred to the primary winding since we have conducted all tests and measurements in the primary site. We also know that R equivalent 1 is equal to R1 plus A square R2 where R1 is the primary winding resistance and R2 is secondary winding resistance. Also, X equivalent 1 is equal to X1 plus A square X2, where X1 is the primary winding leakage reactance and X2 is the secondary winding leakage reactance. The primary resistance, R1, can be measured directly using an ohmmeter. So we can deduce R2 from the upper equations as shown here. Now we know the sum of the leakage reactances, but we cannot measure any one of them separately. So we assume that the total equivalent leakage reactance, X equivalent, is divided equally between the two windings. Thus we can calculate X1 and X prime 2 as equal to half of X equivalent 1. Finally, the actual secondary winding leakage reactance X2 is calculated as X prime 2 divided by A square. With this, we can say that we were able to calculate every single parameter of the equivalent circuit of the single phase transformer. This is the end of this part. Thank you for watching.